And a year from now, I think we'll be talking about, oh my gosh, how did we get to triple digit Bitcoin? And when's the bear market coming? Hello everyone, Mark Yusko dissects the Bitcoin and stock markets with his typical scathing analysis. Subscribe now, hit that bell icon, and embark on an enriching journey toward financial success. Let's unlock the potential of these markets together and pave the way for a brighter financial future. Welcome aboard. The idea that, that all of the money, right? We've talked about all the different estimates from, you know, 30 billion if, you know, investors that the captive investor base in these brokerage firms that haven't been allowed to participate you know, is roughly 30 trillion, pick a number. And 0.1% would be 30 billion. And that, that you know, would move the market. And we've seen about a third of that. We've seen a little over 10 kind of come this way, but it doesn't happen in day one. And, and it gets... I would argue that 0.1 is even kind of a silly number. I think it's easily going to be 1%. So that's 300 billion. But what we saw was a bunch of the big guys said, oh, no, 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 no. Even though this is a BlackRock or Fidelity approved ETF, we're still not going to let you buy it with your money. So people said, well, I'm out, right? I'll just leave and go someplace else. But um, eventually I think they're going to change their minds. And that money will continue in right now, every day, and we'll see how long it lasts, but I, I think it's going to last for a while. Every day, the ETF complex is buying roughly three times the number of Bitcoin that are mined. So we got the having socks on today, and that's only for the next three months. Three months from now, that number goes from 900 to 450. If the same pace keeps up, which I think is pretty likely, um, you're going to be talking six times the daily production. And so that is a supply demand imbalance that will lead to rising prices. And I mean, people have heard this from me ad nauseum, rising prices beget rising prices, right? Once an asset starts to move, people are drawn to it. That's, that's the way it works. And that will push us past fair value into, you know, silly levels sometime in the crypto fall that'll start, you know, next June. And a year from now, I think we'll be talking about, oh my gosh, how did we get to triple digit Bitcoin? And when's the bear market coming? Because there will be another bear market because the FOMO gets really extreme as you start to go parabolic in any asset, like NVIDIA right now. I mean, Tesla before, I mean, NVIDIA right now is, it's, it's amazing to watch. The Bitcoin ETFs across the, the nine of them already have something like 3% of Bitcoin. And it makes sense to me that the next honeypot of money or the next pool of money to flow into Bitcoin is going to come from RIAs and boomers. And it's going to change from a retail dollar to a passive flow, a passive flow dollar. And that's just a very structurally different, that's just a very structurally different uh, set of flows that are going to be driving these markets. No, it's, and it's then, why we have the MAG-7, right? right? We have now more passive money than active in the United States. What does that mean? We have more index funds and ETFs, passive. Now, passive, by the way, is not passive. This is this, you know, I tweeted this out the other day. In the last uh, 20 years, only 31% of companies that went public still exist. Think about that number. 69% of them gone. So there is turnover in these indices. It's just slow. But what they are, they are capitalization weighted, meaning they have to buy the th more of things as they become expensive. So they get more and more and more concentrated. And we saw this phenomenon in 2000, and you get to a point where silliness, right? Cisco at 286 times earnings, and people finally wake up and say, oh, that's bad. And you have a correction. And here we are again. And you got all these companies now trading 100, 150 times earnings. 
30, 40 times revenues. And people are like, no, 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 it's different this time. <laughs> Four most dangerous words in investing. And, and it will end. But when people try to short it, and we've talked about this before with MicroStrategy in 2000, you can try to short the stupidity. And I'm not, MicroStrategy in 2000 is very different than NVIDIA. It's more like Cisco and Microsoft to NVIDIA. Perfectly good, or Intel. Intel went up 20 fold. Think about that. It went up 20 fold in four years because it was going to change the world with AI. It's funny, back in 2000, they were talking about AI. And now it's down 40% since then. So, because it got, you know, displaced. And you know, I saw the, the CEO of NVIDIA on the other day talking about, you know, the entire um, structure of computing is changing and we're leading that. And we, this is great. I love people who are humble braggers. I mean, he's, he's very soft-spoken so, and, and we're the only company that gets this. Really? Really? You think you're the only company in the world that gets that we're in a transformational move in, in computing? Okay, fine. Um, you know, I have a few companies that would disagree with that. But, uh, but if you short that in a momentum world, you get knocked down. So totally agree with you. And actually, we have data on this. So the, the volatility, it's from this side, it's volatility is trending down. In, and I can't, it's, it's, it's reversed on my screen. I can't do it. It's confusing my brain. Um, but uh, volatility Bitcoin was triple digits when it started because it was a science project. There was no there there. It was too, it was super vol, a little penny to two pennies. That's a hundred percent move. Um, but as it has gotten more mature and gotten bigger, that volatility is, is now trended down. It's like in the forties, uh, long-term still closer to, to 65, 70. But we're definitely going to trend down. And it's because the passive holders, hodlers are part of that, but now the ETF is structurally a passive holder. Leverage is also down. So there's not as much leverage and as much speculation. Uh, there, there will be more leverage. Leverage will come back, but, but there's not as much as there was. Um, so I don't, I don't disagree with that at all. But the, the passive versus active debate is is a tough one because the more passive there is, the more, sh the more you just keep reducing the supply and that's like a supply shock. And, and that 3% number is actually probably not right. Not, not that your number is not right, but uh, I, I, I just saw this stat. Wrong. No, I just saw this stat that, that kind of blew me away. I mean, I knew the lost or stolen component of a Bitcoin was big, but I, I never saw it. In, in a visual, the estimate is that 5 million of the 19 million coins that have been mined to date are untouchable, lost, stolen, stuck in multi-sigs where somebody's passed. Or, that's a big number. And even if it's not right, it's probably not off orders of magnitude. And so that 3% is probably more like 5%. And trending to a a very large number, so uh, supply shocks will lead to higher prices. I think the the subtle the subtle disagreement um, we would have is that uh, for for gen for general commodities, consumable commodities, right? If if I take a barrel of oil and I refine it into gasoline and I put that gasoline in my car and I burn it, it's gone. If I take an ear of corn and I roast it and I consume it, it's gone. It's different with gold, right? Gold, you dig it out of the ground, you refine it, you put it in a bar, you don't eat it, you don't melt it, you don't, you don't consume it. And so that supply of that asset stays relatively fixed. And we all know the stock to flow. If you think about the amount of gold that's mined every year versus what's used for industrial purposes, that actually does disappear. Like we consume small amounts of gold for fillings in our teeth or, or you know, conductors in, in electrical circuits. And some of that does get, you know, thrown away and, and consumed. 
but the vast majority of it just sits in these bars and coins. And Bitcoin to me is because that is the monetary base, meaning the base level of all money in the world is gold, right? Every central bank issues money, currency on top of that, not, not money, but the money is the gold part. And, and I'll give you an example of, I just did a talk, I was in Cayman uh, this week, and they have this cool thing. It's called, it used to be called the Cayman Alternative Investment Summit. And that kind of has migrated to more like the, the Cayman Family Wealth Summit. And so they invite families from all over the world to come and talk about big ideas and, and also, hey, bring your money to Cayman. That's, that's what they're trying to do. And so I did one of the keynote addresses. And the, the topic of the, the event was power, politics, and populism. And they're like, all right, Mark, we're going to talk about power, politics, and populism. And I didn't really, I didn't really listen to the assignment. I know that's shocking to you Um, because they really wanted me to talk about alternative investments. And I said, I hate talking about alternative investments because alternative to what? There are no such alternative investments. There are stocks, there are bonds, there are currencies, and there are commodities. Oh, no, hedge funds are, no, hedge funds are just a wrapper. You own stocks, bonds, currencies, commodities. Real estate, that's an alternative. No, I own equity, debt, or the land, the commodity. Private equity, that, that's, a, that's an alternative. No, nope, common stock, preferred stock, you know, convertible bond. So I hate the term. But what I thought she wanted me to talk about was power, politics, and populism. But what she wanted me to talk about was within that. And she had someone talk about power, someone talk about politics, someone talk about, she had, you know, Senator Phil Graham, you know, some big speakers. And so, but anyway, I, I was inspired to do the history of power, politics, and populism. Because if you think about those three things, that is the cycle of an empire. There's the power phase where you're accumulating power and you're rising to empire status. There's the politics phase where the politicians screw it up by overspending and getting indebted and devaluing the currency. And then there's the populism phase where you get kicked out right? French Revolution type. And so, so I went through the history of empires and, and the one that really struck me and the one that, that really kind of hit home given where we are in the U.S. right now was, was Rome. And you, got, you know, I've talked about this in the past, but, but the thing that, that was really, there was a great visual where they had this thing called the, the denarius, right? Which was their, their coin. And it was originally pure silver all silver. But as each district governor, I don't know if governor was the right term, um, decided they wanted to build their own circus or bath or place, you know, to, because they had this great trade realm and they would tax the trade and it made the citizens of Rome super wealthy. And they would build all this great stuff like the Colosseum I love the picture now of the Coliseum, half of its Coliseum and half of its chief stadium. It's like bread and circuses. So I like that. But um, long story short is like, well, there's not enough denarius coins for me to build my great bath to honor me. I'll melt them down and then I'll create more coins. And that's what happened. And the silver content of the denarius basically went to zero. And the soldiers who protected the empire said, don't pay me in this shit. Give me a real coin. And they eventually they had a hyperinflation in wages. And eventually the, the, the soldier said, nope. And then the Visigoths came in and boom, gone. I was like, that's exactly what's happening. The money that we all get paid in, the fiat, is getting slowly deteriorated. And that shows up in the price of Bitcoin. Thank you for watching the interview highlights of Mark Yesko. If you enjoy this highlight video, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.